Howdy folks, so something you don't usually see on uh, this channel, uh, it's a sewing machine. So this is a sewing machine I picked up for five bucks and uh, I did a couple repairs on it and it is now fully functional. And uh, I also uh, retrofitted a different pedal to it because I bought it without a pedal, that's why it was five dollars. So uh, I wanted to uh, just uh, show you this machine because as far as I know there are no other pictures of this model ever existing so um, no idea um, uh, if, if any of these even exist um, and I just want to show uh, you know how, how does a sewing machine uh, pedal work and uh, I've got a teardown of this and a schematic and how I retrofitted it on this and uh, so if you ever see a sewing machine at a you know, thrift store or a garage sale or whatever and it's missing the pedal um, but it's cheap um, you can buy it, and uh, you can just retrofit basically any pedal onto it, um, and uh, it's it's actually a lot more simple uh, than you might think. So this machine is uh, branded Baycrest, and any Canadian uh, should recognize that logo. That is the Hudson's Bay Company logo. So this was originally sold uh, at HBC, and it would have been... Um, sort of a rebrand specifically for them and uh, it's one of the reasons why I don't really know too much about this because there's no there's no documentation and I don't know who made it. Um, there is absolutely no marking on the outside or the inside of this um, that gives a production date or date or a lo like place of manufacture uh, as well as any other kind of manufacturing marks. Um, so I don't know who the OEM for this machine was um, and I don't know where it was made or when it was made, but uh, I did find one reference to it in a 1984 catalog. So um, I suspect it's from somewhere around 1984. Uh, now it's all metal, so it's kind of heavy, which is one of the nice things about it, um, rather than the cheap crap now. Um, but it's model 3700, and uh, it's just got uh, you know the Vancouver office uh, on there, and it's got a serial number, which of course doesn't mean anything. Um, and it's just rated at, uh, you know, 1 amp, 15 watts, you know, standard uh, uh, amount for a sewing machine like this. So, um, what did I have to do to get it working and all that? Well, I'm not going to go through all the parts of the sewing machine because um, I suspect most people who are watching this channel uh, either don't know how to sew or uh, don't care. But uh, it's, uh, it's, there's no computers, it's, it's, fully mechanical, um, you know, the stitch pattern and everything, it, there's actually just a plastic cog that, uh, you know, is followed by a, a cam, so it works kind of like a you know, camshaft uh, in your car kind of a thing, which drives the stitch patterns. Um, the back stitch did not work when I got it, um, and it turned out the lever up here was completely seized. Um, I had to oil it and free it and all that good stuff. And the motor was also loose, all the screws had come loose obviously over the, the years, but other than those problems, um, everything else was uh, readily, uh, easy, was pretty easy to solve. Um, and then I had to figure out how to thread it because of course no documentation, but uh, a couple tries and I figured that out so that wasn't a big deal. Uh, but then of course I came to how do you power this thing? And uh, because it had no pedal. So um, this is the connector that it uses and it's not a terribly great amount of light here. So let's shine a flashlight into it, there we go. So this is the connector that it uses, and it's uh, it's three terminals, just like pretty much every sewing machine, and they were sort of blade style, which is uh, one thing, one reason why I kind of decided to pick it up, because it would allow me to just connect um, some wires with uh, spade terminals on the end of it directly into this connector. Um, obviously you could crimp stuff on there, you could solder stuff on there, um, but uh, this actually allowed me to keep it uh, removable. Um, as long as, of course, you don't screw up the order of the wires. Um, and the way that most sewing machines work is there's there's three pins. Um, one of them, and it, the order is not necessarily guaranteed, one of them is a neutral, the other one is an always-on power, um, and that is, in, in older models like this, it's used to power the light, of course, uh, and there's a switch at the front to turn that on and off. Uh, on newer computer-controlled units, of course, there's a, there's a switch with a power supply, it runs the electronics and stuff off of that. And then the third wire is the power to the motor. And so that is actually controlled by the pedal. So there's actually no electronics of any kind inside the machine. This goes straight, this is the hot, which goes straight into the motor and comes out that shared neutral. So the pedal is what's actually responsible for doing all of the speed control on the motor. And um, so what I did was I just bought a cheap generic uh, pedal and I, uh, I, I dremeled off enough of the connector that I could solder in my wires into the connector 
uh, and then I heat shrink, heat shrunk it, and um, you know, hot glued and everything, and and this is safe enough for me, um, and I got the order right. Uh, the order is pretty easy to figure out. Um, all you need is a multimeter. Um, you should be able to find the motor coil with pretty easily um, because you, you're going to get a resistance, um, and uh, that'll give you the neutral and the the motor, and then just turn the switch for the light on and off, and then you'll you should get between one of those and uh, the un you know the, the unknown. Uh, you should be able to get, uh, you know, open and whatever the bulb resistance is. Uh, and that'll tell you which one the neutral is, because there'll be, there'll, be, there'll be a path from neutral to the bulb, but not from the motor to the bulb. So that's the easy way to, to, to get the pin out. Um, and uh, you don't have to take anything apart to do that. But if you feel like it, it's usually, there's usually a cover to access the motor anyway, so you can just trace the wires. Um, so the pedal that I settled on, let's move this again. Oh, boy. Oh, it's heavy. The pedal that I settled on was a relatively highly rated one from uh, Amazon, and it just says uh, Electronic. I think the uh, the plastic injection uh, hole there is, I guess, supposed to be the O, um, and that's all it says on the front. It's got, of course, the power comes in, and on the rear, uh, it states that it is, uh, you know, one amp, um, 50 hertz for some reason, um, even though it's 100 to 120 volts, um, and it's got some stuff on there. You know, double insulated CE, I don't know whether that stuff, TUV, I think. I don't think that stuff's even real, but um, that's what's on, on here. It's got some little feet, and that's it. And uh, so to prove that this works, let's uh, disengage the clutch here with one hand, the wrong hand. Oh boy, that could, uh, could be difficult, but it does run. There's the bobbin winder spinning to prove that it works. I don't want to actually run this because I've actually got thread in it right now. But uh, yeah, so it works fine um, with this pedal, so no issues there. And uh, so I'll, I'll show you what's inside the pedal um, and uh, take a look at the schematic. So technically we would call this a phase angle motor controller, um, but realistically it's just a dimmer. Um, it's a dimmer switch. Uh, the, same, the same thing that you would find you know, dimming your lights in your dining room. Um, you know, incandescent dimmers, the ones that uh, have a triac in them and they chop up the sine wave. Um, that is exactly the circuit that's in this, um, because uh, as long as the circuit can handle the, you know, the reactive load of the motor, um, it's exactly the same thing. So um, realistically, yeah, you could run a sewing machine off of a dimmer if you wanted to. I would not recommend it, but it's doable. But that's all that's all that's in here. So it's really a simple circuit, um, and so that's why. Also, if your pedal dies. Um, it should be really easy to repair because they have almost nothing in them. Um, so if they don't have a fuse or anything that's blown, and you know that the sewing machine's fine, um, check the triac. You know the triac should be an easy thing to replace if it goes short, um, or the switch micro switch. You know, there's, there's only a handful of parts. I think I can count on both my fingers how many parts are in this thing total. Um, so we'll see that once we take it apart, um, and I'll show you the circuit and just how simple it is. For those who are curious to see what's inside the pedal, this is what's in it. So it's just a top and bottom clamshell, um, just ABS plastic. Uh, kind of interesting that the uh, the top was made in 2017 and the bottom and the board were made in 2015, so that's a little interesting. Um, but yeah, it's just uh, spade terminals uh, coming in. Everything clips together. Um, the pin here for the pivot and two little tabs to stop it from opening all the way up. So there's absolutely uh, no fasteners. Um, there are, of course, a fastener for the spring and a fastener for the board, and this is the board. Um, so it's, it's very simple, but it's uh, well made, so there's nothing really wrong here. Um, so we've just got our, our input, uh, which of course is also our output. Um, we've got our uh, main uh, linear potentiometer, um, which is what, of course, is what's going to control the speed. You've got a normally closed um, micro switch here, which is what fully shuts the motor off. A trimmer to adjust uh, the bias point so you can uh, uh, change um, what, sort of what the minimum speed is. And there's your triac here, and uh, you know diac. It's, it's just a standard phase angle controller. Um, they've added some, you know, some elastic to hold some of these things down, but there's absolutely no heat sinking on this uh, whatsoever. So you know it's rated at one amp, and it's probably fine. But I wouldn't run this uh, for extended periods of time without a, a heat sink on this. Um, you know, at, at at one amp, but it's not a heavy duty thing anyway, so it's not a big deal. Um, but yeah, that's that's it. Um, this is fully disassembled. Um, I was just drawing out the schematic diagram, so I'll show you that in a moment, and uh, I'll just put this back together. So this is the schematic of what's in the pedal, and it looks just like your average dimmer. So it's got a micro switch that uh, closes when you press on the pedal, um, and basically this uh, this is the 
linear pot. Um, so as you press down on the pedal, the linear pot moves, and uh, this, of course, charges up, uh, you know, this cap through this resistor, which uh, reaches a threshold, the diac fires, uh, which then uh, triggers the triac for the rest of that uh, main cycle. Um, and you've got, uh, you know, looks like some filtering here, and then you've got a uh, just a, a trimmer, which is used to sort of bias this to uh, change, um, you know, what the, the strength is when it comes on. And that's that's really it. So that's uh, that's what's inside that, uh, uh, you know, Amazon uh, special uh, sewing pedal. So if anyone cares, um, you can, uh, uh, I think those are all the values, 0 0.047, 0 0.033 microfarads, 15K. I think, I think I've got all the, all the values except for the inductor. I don't, uh, don't know what that is, um, and I'm, I'm not going to try and measure it. So that about wraps it up for this video. Um, hopefully you found this, uh, I don't know, entertaining at the least. And uh, if anyone has one of these and has any information on it, I would really love to know. Um, because there is, uh, there's no documentation on uh, these Bay Crest sewing machines whatsoever. So, um, anyway, um, until next time, thanks for watching.